it's very possible that Almayo has uh, strong ties with the CIA, with at least with someone high up in the in the operations of like foreign, you know, um, intelligence in in Mexico. Mm -hmm. That's how Almayo has managed to keep safe and to keep you know alive. And he's seventy fucking three, and he yeah. uh, has diabetes. But he's still out there. I was just there. I'm posting that um, that video in a couple of weeks on my YouTube channel, where I'm hanging around with his sicarios, very young man as well, very similar with Amayo sicarios. With Amayo sicario, the first his first security ring. Amayo was not more than ten kilometers away from where I was that night, and it's a ranch, a rancho really similar to Jesus Maria. His house is really similar. His people, so they live very, very similar. So if the Mexican government wants to go against El Mayo, they could easily get him. Easily, he's an old man. He doesn't even have enough, you know, power or energy to run uh, like a video or all that shit. He's a 73 years old diabetic man, uh, but he's really well protected and the people in Sinaloa really loves him. The people in Culiacan and in the, the, a lot of other places in, in, in Sinaloa, they love El Mayo. They feel protected. A recent survey by a Mexican institution found that more than 50% of the people living in the three major cities of Culiacan uh, feel protected by the Sinaloa cartel. That's 50% on the major cities. That's not even taking into account all the small towns like Jesus Maria and these places where Mayu lives and all this shit. Who put out a survey like that? Uh, it was a Mexican institution to oh, really? like to have a, to have an impression on how people felt about you know the security forces in Sinaloa. And it turns out that more than 50% feel, feel protected by the Sinaloa cartel. So they've managed to earn a lot of like social bases in Sinaloa and regular people, they said they started saying before, before a video was captured, they started putting out the word that the Los Chapitos were getting too violent. They're like, they're, they're getting too violent, man. They're getting too powerful. And they were basically asking El Mayo to step in. They were like, El Mayo is not like that. El Mayo is going to put an end to these guys because they're getting like too violent. El Mayo was taken out of Culiacán uh, by Los Chapitos. He was displaced by Los Chapitos. So Culiacán is owned by Los Chapitos, but El Mayo didn't want to go to war against them. So what he did is he complied with what Los Chapitos asked him for, which is paying 30% of all his operations in Culiacán. And El Mayo is currently paying Los Chapitos faction a 30% um, cut to use the territory of, of Culiacán. To, Didn't I, he help <clears throat> get Ovidio out in 2019 when he got caught? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of beef as well during that operation because people started saying that El Mayo's man didn't step in to rescue Ovidio, but turns out he did, like he did, he stepped in. Um, I guess El Mayo is cool with Los Chapitos and Los Chapitos respect a lot of Mayo and they they owe El Mayo for that rescue in, well, in Jalisco uh, from the hands of Damaso and the new generation cartel. Uh, but still, they they feel like they own Culiacán and that El Mayo has to pay 30% uh, as a cut to operate in that city. And El Mayo is a strong man. He, I mean, what he decided to do is like to pay and, com and comply with what he was requested by Los Chapitos, but he started owning most of the border cities like Tijuana, San Luis Rio Colorado, Mexicali. He owns that strip. Um, so when Los Chapitos needs need to stash drugs on border cities or to get drugs across, he asks again for so that he gets 30%. It, he gets it back. Yeah, he so gets it's that a wash. 30%. Yeah, exactly. He's a <laughs> smart man. And yeah. I don't think he is or was behind Ovidio's capture, to be honest. I don't think that's the case. Are people saying, are some people saying yeah, that? Yeah, there's a lot of people saying that. Uh, not, not what I've heard from people knowledgeable, people close to El Nini, people close to Los Chapitos, people close to El Mayo Zambada. Um, on the contrary, they say that El Mayo Zambada sent out a bunch of his henchmen to try to rescue Ovidio but at the same time I think El Mayo is a happy bystander by, bystander of like what was happening he feels that I guess 
if I know that people is saying that Los Chapitos are were becoming too violent for Culiacán, I'm pretty sure he's heard that too. Mm -hmm. And they respect a lot uh, El Mayo, and they they feel protected by El Mayo. So most of them are not even asking the Mexican government to to help them out with the violent um, input that Los Chapitos are having in Culiacán. They're asking El Mayo to step in. So if he if El Mayo <laughs> was working with the U.S. government or was working with some sort of U.S. intelligence, would the U would the Mexican government know about that? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think even that many. I mean, who knows? Even if El Mayo knows himself, you know that he's being used by right. by by one of these operations. But if you look deep enough into El Mayo's background, you'll find these Cuban men that used to be a police officer for the Cuban uh, Revolution for Fidel Castro, uh, and he fled to Florida. And yes. from Florida, he was arrested. This on is the guy traffic. from the last narc, right? Exactly. The yeah. guy who, the CIA agent who killed, yeah. is it Felix no, Rodriguez? No, 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 that, no, that's not Felix Rodriguez. Okay, okay, He's, okay. Uh, he used to be a police officer. Then he flew to to Miami. Uh, and then he was charged with drug trafficking. And then something like there's a blackout on his history. And he pops up again in, in Cuba doing some shady shit. And then in Nicaragua, in Colombia, and then he pops up in LA. Like way back during? Like, during Fidel Castro's revolution. Really? And then he pops up in LA, where he meets Modesta Zambada, El Mayo's older sister. And he gets, he falls in love, falls in love with her. They move to Culiacán, and then he starts pulling the whole Zambadas into the business he owned. He's like, dude, I have this multi-million business of selling and trafficking weed to the US, I have all the clients. Probably he said, I have all the green light from the US government, but this is this is what you need to do. And it's uh, it's known that he was an operator for the CIA. He was uh, he was operating for and the CIA. He was the one that got El Mayo um, into, El this Mayo into this business. Yeah, yeah. Through through El Mayo's sister. Uh, uh, um, oh shit, I just, uh, can't remember her name. I just said her name, but I completely forgot. Her name is this dude still alive? Yes, he's seventy three. What's his name? I don't know that that guy. The CIA guy who got El Mayo. No, no, into he it. he's a shadow man. There's like one photo of him, and you have to oh really look deep into to find his name. He's uh can't remember his name, but I'm putting out uh, a short documentary on that uh, in two weeks on my YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, if you want to watch that, I I have a photo of him and his whole history, how he moved around, and how he got. Uh, Modesta Zambada uh -huh. uh, in love with him, and he brought he's he was like the dad dad for Amaya. It's wild. I had no idea about that. It's crazy, man. Yeah, there's a lot of shit going on that we don't really know. You you really need to go in like that fucking rabbit hole. Yeah.